My name is Steven Christian. I am a animator, a teaching artist, and now an augmented reality mobile developer. So the, the project is an animated sequence for my augmented reality comic book. And essentially the purpose of this is to provide a context for the world, and particularly the main character and the main antagonist. When the Imagination Project came about, it was sort of in this time of turmoil and just the opportunity to work on uh, the project that to me is very culturally relevant and it really spoke to the time in which I was creating it. It allowed me to let things just slow down and let things mature in an organic way. This has been just a, a huge experimental project on like how far I could push these tools to tell the same initial project that I had, but in ways that go beyond the scope that I even imagined. And so this is me testing out that feature of the big experiment where I'm taking a print product, one of the flyers, and integrating the animated intro into it. Mind you, it's a little buggy, but we'll see. Like I said, it's a little buggy, but hey, we're getting there. Okay, so I was essentially working on this project. Uh, it was an animated sequence for my webcomic Island Fever, and I really wanted to just make an a animated sequence that I could add to my books because I, I wanted to have an anime, but I knew that really just being able to like pull off an animated show week after week after week, uh, that's clearly not sustainable for just like one person, right? And so I knew I was doing this AR thing and that was really picking up, but you know, having something that was like a minute to 30 seconds, that really sort of was the, uh, the encompassing of that, uh, that series, that, that's just something that I wanted to do, you know, have a fight scene, have, you know, these, these little snippets, uh, was really, it was just really something that I was really looking forward to. And so what I did is I ended up, uh, back in September, I had just ended up applying to this thing called the imagination project. And then I ended up getting it. And the crazy part about it was that this project gave me the opportunity to just stop really a lot of things and focus on focus on the project that I was working on. And during this time, like obviously it's the end of September, it's, you know, like freaking half of the West Coast was on fire and like money wasn't coming in because of COVID and all these different things, right? And so it allowed me to actually just play around with different ideas and really focus on just, I don't know, like it, it was just, it was just a very interesting feeling just like getting that project because uh, I was actually going to just get paid to just work on something that I, I really wanted to just see and do. And so over the, over the past three months of this project, you know, I not only had my animated series and I storyboarded everything prior to it, that's how I pitched it. But then I got to learn more stuff about Unity. I got to do more stuff with ZBrush and ultimately like my freaking 
Wacom Cintiq, the one that I had before, that mess died. And so, you know, like I hit like a low because I didn't know how I was gonna complete the project. And then very quickly, you know, things turned around because obviously it was, this project was supported by Wacom. And so that allowed me to uh, really get a new Cintiq, uh, get some new stuff to uh, play around with, some new software. And then it was just sort of, you know, put the pen to the paper and, and just work on it. So one of the things that actually stood out to me was, I remember I was trying to incorporate some 3D models that I was doing in ZBrush into the project. And because I got the Cintiq and everything and uh, I just really started enjoying ZBrush. But then I, I noticed that like just things weren't working right. And I wanted to, the things I wanted to incorporate, just just, they just weren't working. And so I kept deleting it, deleting it, deleting it. And after like six, seven, eight hours, all I all I kept thinking about was, dang, I wasted so much time on something that I'm not even going to be using in my project. And the thing about it was that it really made me fo force. It really made me focus on the fact that, no, like I have the liberty to play around with these things and explore these tools for this project because I have support for doing this very thing. You know, very often I, I've tried to trade my time for money. And with this, I wasn't trading my time for money. I was actually being supported to explore things in a natural and organic way, the way that they should have been, you know? And as a freelancer, I, I feel like many times we as freelancers, we're, we're forced to reckon with the choices that we make and we have to choose our projects the right way and we have to value them so that we don't undersell ourselves and end up working for three dollars an hour you know that's that's always something that i've really hated about it is you know we have a level of agency and we have freedom but we don't really have a lot of control and you know the control that we do have it, it's sort of very superficial and, and shallow to where we could control our style, but we can't control the value that we, uh, that's placed on, you know, the work that we put out there. And, you know, this really just allowed me to think about like, dang, you know, like I'm working on a $3,000 project and whatever comes from that is, is worth, you know, every ounce and penny of it. And it, it was just interesting. Like it, it was because I think for this and because of the cohort and everything and, and all the support that I got from this project, I felt like it allowed me to grow in a in a way that didn't feel rushed. I felt like towards the end of the project, the last month, I was really in grind mode, trying to finish it and, and get it ready to be released. But it wasn't it wasn't a high stake situation. I would say like during that time I was working on other projects that were a lot more stressful and it required a lot less of me whereas this one it required a whole lot more of me I think I worked on using like 10 15 pieces of software on this and from Microsoft Word to Blender to ZBrush to iClone to Character Creator to Cinema 4D for some stuff Unity after effects all types of stuff to to put this together i think i even used like one note and you know sketch up at some point like it, it it was crazy and at the end of it, it it was really organic and then more importantly i actually had the money to actually pay for somebody to do the audio design for it and just the little money that I was able to scrap up together for that from the project and, and the support that I got from the fr project was really good because it was one less thing that I didn't have to worry about and it really added to it in a way that I didn't have to stress about. I had trust in the person that I was collaborating with and, and they hit it out of the park. And, you know, it's something that, you know, I had probably the assets and I probably could have figured it out, but I didn't have to. And I got to focus on the things that I really cared about, which was obviously the visuals and the and the AR part. And that was interesting. Like, and when I finished this, like it, 
it's really interesting because like my work and and the work that I aspire to do is always focused around you know representation and impact and the impact of this was really you know what does it look like to have an animated show that that's that's focused around black experiences and it it aims to be a representation of, of innovation you know how do you how do you watch a show how do you watch a sequence how do you engage with something that requires you to use technology to to engage with it's not like you're pulling up a youtube video you literally have to download an app and experience it in augmented reality and and that was something that i really got to explore and it really paralleled a lot of the work that I, i've been doing in the ar space because at face value this is just animation it's frame by frame 2d animation i incorporate some 3d stuff in there and i make it as engaging and as possible right but you know ultimately you're you're going to see it with a, a level a unique level of depth that you often wouldn't see any of those things because of the medium that i chose to present it in and i think just the idea of you know being able to t have the subject matter which is very you know unapologetic about what it is right it's a it's a boy running away from you know cops that are represented by pigs and being able to see within that confrontation you know who is able to who is able to you know get away scotch free at the end of it you know you see the one of the main characters the pig pigsby he's laying on the ground sort of dazed and then the the boy roscoe he's he slides away and he and he runs to freedom and just something as as meaningless as that uh was really you know a statement that i wanted to make because given the year that we had it, it's you know it's something that i i want to see more of right and not and not from a perspective of you know harming anybody but we're seeing right now that that it's sort of open season back up back up again you know it's spring sun is out that means that you know black and brown people are getting shot now and we're seeing it on camera and we're seeing that like many of the other ones there it's not justified and all it is is just a simple encounter you know in many ways it's a could be a case of mistaken identity it could be you know making a mistake that ultimately ends in somebody's death but it's like that's the stuff that we're seeing. So what, it, what does it look like to see something that uh, doesn't have us laying dead in the street? And this is the project that I, that I wanted to do to, to sort of explore that idea and, and see that, you know, there's life before and after this. And so with this, like I, I finished the animated series intro and I hope to start doing the outro for it, but this project, you know, it, it, it took a lot and it incorporated a lot of the skills that I, that I have already and it allowed me to expand and grow from it and now it's available, you know? And so I'll be doing little AR demos and, and sending out ways to experience it, but it's, it's done and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. And so now, you know, the next step for me is really uh, going back to where I started, which is web comics and, and fleshing out the stories and the characters and then working on that outro sequence. And then ultimately, I want to get to a point where every new volume becomes a new variation of that sequence where I'm building off of it and being able to build off of it allows me to get all the things that I want from it. Right. Which is to, to tell stories in a in short form that uh, give you a glimpse of the world that I built with my webcomic. And with AR, I can do that within pages. I could add animation, but it's one thing to sort of just sit down and just watch an animated sequence and just be like, dang, you know, like this is this is it right here. Like this is something that I want to see. And, you know, I've I've grown up and watched a lot of great 
animated sequences and I know that if the sequence is great then the show is going to be great and especially with a lot of the, my favorite animes and stuff like that and so you know this is something that I, I hope to continue especially as I get into medical school and uh, be able to build a team around and and be able to tell these stories in a, in a way that's impactful and relevant to people and ultimately we'll just see how it goes I mean like I think that's the beauty of being a creator is that you know I can create things and and bring things to life uh, from my mind and then I could work with people to uh, see those things through and ultimately those are the things that have impact and legacy and I don't know like I, I'm I really appreciate all the stuff that I've learned in this process and you know all the tools that I was able to play around with and, and ideas that I was able to explore uh, because you know the the beauty of this was that I got to be unhindered in my exploration and I didn't have to feel like I was racing against a clock to crank out something so I could get paid for it so I could afford to do the things that I enjoy you know I was doing all those without the consequences of of having a deadline over my head and it, it it came out the way that I wanted it to and it inspired me to think about how I can continue doing this and make it sustainable so that this isn't the only project that I do of this you know it's just the first of many and so again as usual, I, I, I appreciate all the support from everybody. And, you know, if you want to check out my other projects, check out shop.iltopia.com for, you know, all the merch. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, patreon.iltopia.com. Uh, check out PDX Black Rose, Black Superheroes Matter. And obviously, you know, Stucky and Augmented Reality and my Stuck on an Island channel. Um, yeah, you know, things are things are good. Things are things are rocking and moving and uh, excited to see, you know, what other projects come down the pipeline that I'm able to work on and, and connect with people with and and ultimately see like how far I can push myself as a creator, because uh, I think this is just a, all a big journey of self-improvement. And, you know, the more I learn from these projects and how I can connect with people uh, through art and you know ideas is uh is something that you know i think is you know i think it's valuable and so uh with that i'll catch you later